The Israeli military assault on Gaza in response to the October 7th attacks by Hamas has the highest rate of death of any conflict of the 21st century. Most of the deaths from both events have been civilians, but Israel remains steadfast in its mission. But can Hamas really be eliminated? And with the worldwide calls for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, what are Israel's chances of victory? Tensions have grown over the scope of Israel's military campaign and the need for a lasting solution. This can only come through a regional approach that includes a pathway to a Palestinian state. Yet, Prime Minister Netanyahu has openly defied the U.S. With no roadmap to peace, the conflict has already escalated with fears of a wider Middle East war. Despite accusations of breaking international law and committing genocide, which Israel says are profoundly distorted, Mr. Netanyahu refuses to back down. In its mission to eliminate Hamas, has Israel set itself an unobtainable goal? Months since the conflict erupted, Israel, whose army far outstrips Hamas's military capabilities, is still facing resistance in Gaza. Before October 7th, Hamas's armed wing was thought to have up to 30,000 fighters. The Israel Defense Forces claim they have killed almost a third of them and estimates 16,000 Hamas fighters are wounded. U.S. agencies think the figure is lower, up to 11,700, and many could return to battle. If those figures are accurate, it would amount to a significant reduction in capabilities. We put them to Hamas, which rejects the figures. If what the occupation says is true, how does it explain the Qassam brigades continuing to operate with such force and in all areas of the Gaza Strip? It is certain that the Qassam Brigades is able and ready to continue defending our people in this war as long as the occupation aggression on Gaza continues. Former Israeli colonel Marie Eisen, who once worked as a media advisor for the PM's Likud party, gives her assessment of Israel's military campaign. The commanders have been killed. Cache of weapons have been found. That doesn't mean that we've killed every single terrorist. We are systematically blowing up the underground subterranean terror system. But some military analysts are more skeptical about the level of damage to Hamas. They could fairly easily recruit new fighters. Um, so that's probably not the most important metric that we're looking at in this. The tunnel network is a lot larger than, um, than, than previously estimated. So destroying or neutralizing the tunnels is, uh, is, is, is where you might describe it as uh, um, there's still a long way to go for the Israelis. Initially, they started off and they were blowing up the shafts of the tunnel to try and stop people popping out of them. But because there are so many shafts linking into the network, then that's relatively futile. So do you go down and blow up the whole tunnel? But then that could there could be um, hostages down there. So uh, it's really difficult job. Either way, it's a critical question for Israel. Hamas is one of two dominant political groups. The other is the more secular Fatah, which dominates the Palestinian Authority governing in the West Bank. Hamas won the elections in 2006, ejecting the PA from Gaza by force the following year, and they have governed there ever since. The PA are seen by many as corrupt and collaborators in Israeli occupation. Under their governance, Jewish settlements in the West Bank, deemed illegal under international law, have drastically increased in numbers. Although the PA has publicly condemned this, it has still fueled anger among Palestinians. Backing for Hamas seems to be growing, according to a poll of Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza from late 2023. It suggests support for Hamas doubled during the fourth quarter of 2023, from 22% to 43%, still less than half of Palestinians, but outstripping their longtime rivals, Fatah. 
the rise in support for Hamas comes almost entirely from participants in the West Bank. 72% of respondents overall agree with Hamas' decision to launch an offensive on October 7th. And the poll suggests 63% support armed struggle as the best means of ending Israeli occupation. Again, the majority of the support comes from participants in the West Bank. The polling organizations say that support for Hamas usually rises temporarily during or immediately after a war. Academic and critic of Israel, Dr. Ibrahim Freyhat, gives his view of Palestinian support for Hamas. They are living with no hope, with no future, and Hamas gave them the, the alternative, which is through confrontation and through revolution that would bring to them a different approach uh, on that level. So Hamas enjoys the largest support, not only in Palestine, but in the entire Arab and Muslim world. We don't have data to verify support for Hamas regionally, but there are also many Arabs who oppose them. Hundreds of Palestinian activists took part in a rare online event at the start of 2022, criticizing Hamas governance of the Gaza Strip, where, under Israeli blockade, people were already living under dire conditions and there was high unemployment. Hamas says it's engaged in armed struggle against Israel to end occupation and create a Palestinian state. They are considered a terrorist group by much of the West, with many pointing out its leaders still call for Israel's destruction. But a resistance movement in parts of the Arab world. Hamas agenda is limited within the, the Palestinian agenda. So it doesn't have a global message that uh, advocates uh, religion and Islam for the world or for other countries. So it's, an, it's a national liberation movement that limits its objectives, its agenda, to the end of occupation and establishment of a Palestinian state. They started carrying out attacks mostly targeting Israeli soldiers in 1989. But after 29 Palestinian worshippers were killed by an Israeli settler in 1994 at Al Ibrahimi Mosque, also known as the Cave of Patriarchs, Hamas upped the violence, starting a campaign of suicide attacks targeting civilians. Over the following three decades, the levels of violence from both sides got progressively worse. And the failure of peace talks, which had once looked promising, continued to have a defining impact. There is another context to seven of October, and again, none of this is to justify the atrocities. But clearly that is a context in which Gaza has been under uh, Israeli blockade uh, since Hamas took over the Strip in 2007. It is a context in which Israel's occupation remains entrenched, including the West Bank, where Israel has been consolidating what the European Union has called a one-state reality of uh, inequality and uh, perpetual conflict, which many human rights organizations refer to as apartheid. Israel says that the blockade is necessary because of the threat from Hamas. However, to many Palestinians, the occupation renews the grievances, and observers argue it could re-energize resistance, a concern expressed by a Palestinian psychologist who grew up in Gaza. As a psychologist, I would say that I'm, I'm sure there is a lot of these kids want to revenge for the death of their parents. I'm sure, you know, they they want to revenge for, you know, their siblings who've been killed. And with these atrocities that has been happening in, in Gaza nowadays, I don't know how many, uh, how many um, you know, fighters Israel made. Um, that supports Hamas now. A worry also voiced by the Irish foreign minister, who reportedly told the Israeli president on a recent trip to Israel, what you are doing is creating fertile ground for more extreme views to grow. How worried are Israelis about the war influencing radicalization? They are already so radicalized. Our response in that sense is first and foremost to try to eliminate the capabilities. The ideology is already there. It won't make the ideology worse than it already is. They did that on October 7th, and they have said that they want to do it again. Israel have never been as explicit as they are now about their intention to eliminate Hamas. 
Yet, earlier experiences highlight how challenging this is. Hamas is not just a military movement, nor is it just a political movement. It is an ideology. That ideology will not be eradicated, certainly not through Israeli force of arms. During the Second Intifada from 2000 to 2005, an uprising following the failure to establish a Palestinian state, Israel killed leader Ismail Abu Shanab and Hamas founder Sheikh Ahmed Yassin and then his replacement Abdelaziz al Rantisi. But Hamas continued to gain support from many Palestinians. In 2014, a war erupted in the Gaza Strip. Israel claimed to have dealt a significant blow to Hamas. However, ex-Israeli soldier Benzi Sanders, who fought in the war, claims it ended up strengthening Hamas. I know for a fact that many civilians were killed in the area that I was in. And uh, I was left uh, after that experience kind of uh, questioning what it, what it all accomplished. Did it actually strike Hamas? Did it actually weaken them? Did it actually prevent uh, the risk of that happening again? And what I realized in the years afterwards was that, no, it didn't. Uh, not only that, uh, Hamas got stronger. We don't know if Israel will succeed in its mission, but even its allies argue that a lasting settlement between Israelis and Palestinians is the only way to guarantee peace in the future. Some suggest it could be the best way to weaken Hamas. If one truly wants to marginalize and to weaken Hamas, then the only way that can happen is through the creation of a viable political trap. But Israel, shocked by the brutality of the October 7th attacks, remain firm in continuing to prevent a Palestinian state and are defiant on eliminating Hamas. I just can't see a victory day for the Israelis. So they, they can uh, massively degrade Hamas, but the key thing is then how do you prevent Hamas re-emerging in the sort of aftermath of the major military operation? So when I look at the day after, I think that Israel will very much control the continuation of the campaign to eliminate Hamas capabilities. They're always going to show something, but the bulk of them, the threat of them, that we're going to be able to eliminate. Under Mr. Netanyahu, who leads the most right-wing government in Israel's history, Israel plans to retain security control for the foreseeable future. A stance amounting to long-term occupation, supported by ministers and parliamentarians in Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition government. Some of them openly say they want to see Jewish settlements in Gaza, but this post-war vision is not one that is endorsed by the U.S. Following pressure from the Biden administration for a day after a scenario, Defense Minister Yuav Gallant outlined a plan. Critically, it satisfied the U.S. by ruling out civilian settlements in Gaza. Prime Minister Netanyahu has since confirmed local officials would run Gaza civil affairs, but has not said he'd allow the Palestinian Authority to return. Israel would retain complete freedom to conduct military operations there. How post-war Gaza is governed remains an open question, as does the prospect of a lasting peace deal. But without an alternative to the status quo, there is a real risk of more extreme violence in the future.